This speaker cab is a rather controversial one. On its surface, it might look like just any ordinary speaker cab, but it's not. Cabinets like this one spark debate on whether or not they're effective, and Celestian speakers even go as far as to say that speaker cabs like this shouldn't be built, which is kind of a big deal. So I bought one to try and get to the bottom of this. This is not a sponsored video. All right, we got a bit ahead of ourselves. What actually is this? Why is it different? Why does it exist? All pretty important questions. Another one is, why are you not subscribed yet? But I digress. Well, this particular example is a new enough release from Harley Benton. It's their 1x12 Tele cabinet, which comes from their new Plus line, which is their offering of a more premium line of guitar cabinets. For many years, they've had cheaper options available and they were very popular. These new ones do cost a bit more, but for that extra price, you get higher end speakers and the build quality is very good. And that rings true with this piece that I have here. But this one is different from all the other cabinets in the line. In fact, it's different from most cabinets just out there. And it's different for one reason. People debate on what affects guitar tone, but one thing that most people tend to agree on is that speaker and speaker cabinet do impact the sound quite a bit. There's videos from Jim Lil on this topic that I would highly recommend watching. Speaker cabs come in all shapes and sizes, but it's usually bigger is better. 1x12 speaker cabinets are great for travel and transport. They're small, they're light, they don't take up much room. But if you're expecting them to sound as big and bassy as a big 4x12, it won't. Small box, small sound. But what if there was a way to change that? Well, that's this. Or at least, that's this concept. This cabinet has these vents which are filled with air. And something we often forget is that air is all around us and it does have a mass. It is something that you can move. There is a breeze, you can, you can move air. And in this case, it's moving with the speaker. It's resonating in these vents. So the vents themselves are kind of like speaker cones. The air moves like a speaker, but it resonates at a much lower frequency. Now these type of cabinets go by many different names. Bass reflex cabs, tele cabs, vented cabs, ported cabs, lots of different names mean the same thing. And the idea isn't a new one, been around since the 1930s, but it's mainly been in PA speakers, subwoofers, bass speakers. You don't really see it in guitar speakers. And there's a reason for that. The design when it comes to guitar was really pushed forward by EV speakers. They designed a cabinet specifically to be used with their very high output speakers and made the plans open source so anyone could build a cabinet for it. The thing about this type of cab is that there's a lot of precise calculations and a lot of science to make it sound good. They're designed with specific speakers in mind. You can't just put anything into this. A, it won't sound good and B, it can even damage the speaker. Officially, Celestian speakers, who are one of, if not the biggest guitar speaker company in the world, advise against building Tele cabinets. They say that it's essentially pointless, stating that guitar speakers don't typically produce this type of low frequency. And they even go so far as to warn you that a speaker in this type of cab can be damaged by the pressure. Guitar speakers are not recommended for use in ported cabinets, as the increase in cone exertion below the tuning frequency can cause the thin paper edge of the cone to tear. Well, that's kind of scary, because this cabinet comes loaded with a Celestian Creamback speaker. It also can come with a Greenback, but again, they're both Celestians. But if you've watched to this point, you probably all have the same question. Does it work? Is there a noteworthy difference? Well, to find out, I did an experiment. This particular cabinet comes with this cover, very similar to that of the cabinets that were designed by EV speakers. This cover has a third port underneath it, a much bigger port actually than these two small side ports, and it can come off. So I cut this very tight fitting piece of plywood to seal the ports, so that way I could have no ports, two ports, and all three ports open, and we could hear the difference. All the guitar playing being put through the speaker is coming from a looper pedal, so there's no variation in the playing whatsoever, and I didn't move the mic when changing out the covers. So everything is the same, there are no variations except for the covers of the ports. Did you notice the difference? A big difference? A little difference? No difference. Let's try again, but with a more varied piece of audio.
Did you notice a difference there? Let's play that one more time, but this time we're going to look at the frequencies as they're playing, and pay close attention to the lower frequencies. There was a vast difference between the ports closed and completely open. Around 45 hertz, there was a big bump when the ports were all open. But to give you reference, 45 hertz sounds like this. It's pretty low. And I did notice a bit more rumble. I felt a bit more rumble in the room when I did my test, but realistically, in a recording situation, that's going to be a frequency that is just EQ'd out, because that's the bass. You're not really supposed to be there. Guitar is generally a middle instrument, and to sit in the mix, you don't really need that. So is this cab worth it? Well, depends on what you want. It's not going to replace a 4x12 cabinet. It still sounds like a 1x12. But I noticed a lot more difference in feel than in sound. The rumble was, was a physical thing, so if this is a live performance cabinet, well, maybe if you want a little bit more rumble. The one concern I do have is the warning that Celestian gave about pairing this type of cabinet with this type of speaker, but that is something that really only time will tell. If this cabinet is specifically designed with the speakers that it comes with in mind, then we hopefully shouldn't have any problem. A promising indication that this is the case is that this cab doesn't match the sizes of the open source cab for the EV speakers, so that, that kind of indicates that there was a little bit of adjustment in the design. And also, it's just a pretty well-made cabinet. You do get good value for your money here. Compared to a lot of speaker cabinets on the market, this is very good value. And when compared to ported cabs, because they're so rare, this is really good value. The only real negative I would say is, these cabinets come with a greenback or creamback speaker, and that's fair enough, they're very similar speakers, so if it was designed around them, perfectly fine. But they should probably mention that this is not the type of cabinet that you swap speakers out, because, as we've already stated, if you put the wrong one in, it's probably not going to sound as good, and you could damage it. And even more so, they sell this cabinet unloaded, no speaker in it for you to put your own speaker in it. And they don't say what should go in there, which is something that they probably should, if it was designed with a speaker in mind, which it should be. So they should really warn you about what to put in here and what not to put in, especially with the unloaded cabinets. So that's a little look at the Harley Benton Thiele cab and vented cabs and ported cabs and what was the other one called? Uh, base reflex cabs, all, all of those cabs, a general look at them as well. And let me know if you noticed a difference in the audio. Of course, when you're doing these tests, headphones are always the best option. But uh, I'd be interested to know what it was like on your end. Do you think it's worth it? Anyway, that's the video. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye!